Since our 5,000 iRating in a month challenge that we did where we played iRacing for 34 days non-stop, 10 plus hours a day, uh, check out the last video on the channel if you want to see what that was about. Since then, I haven't actually played any other driving simulators at all. I've literally just played iRacing. We also played some Hell Let Loose, which is an incredibly good game. Best grass and hedges in, in all of gaming. But uh, yeah, no other driving simulators have been touched. So in this video, I am going to jump into the glorious original Assetto Corsa and we're going to compare the experience of playing Assetto Corsa with my fully Stockholm Syndrome brainwashed eye racing brain and we're going to see what really stands out and uh, what is better or worse about the simulators. So fasten your seatbelts, make yourselves a cup of tea and uh, let's do some driving. Now, first of all, obviously, uh, one of the downsides of Assetto Corsa, that's right, I'm being objective here. One of the downsides of Assetto Corsa is that it doesn't have a uh, online rating system that iRacing has with the uh, online ability to just jump into a session that's going every hour. That is undisputably the best feature that iRacing has over any other sim after iRacing's voice chat. Uh, the, voice, the voice is the best feature in iRacing, everyone knows that. But yeah, you know... It, it, the fact is, AC, when it comes to like just jumping into a, a, a race online with people, um, it's, it's, it's a disaster. Uh, not if you're doing leagues, but if you, you know, if you just don't want, if you just want to load in without planning or anything, you've got like World Series, series Track Titan, SRS, and stuff, and occasionally there are people in them, but you have to sign up to all these different things. They're uh, most of them are mostly dead. That is AC's biggest shortcoming. And you would hope maybe in AC2, that's what Kunos address. In fact, they could just release Assetto Corsa with a ranked multiplayer system that was official and everyone would be happy. But they won't do that because Kunos are mental. We do have public servers though, so uh, we can just jump into one of these again. So here we go. We can, we can go with the Brands Hatch, the MX5 Brands Hatch. We found a server, we've got a car, and we've actually driven this quite a bit in iRacing, so this would be, this would be a good comparison. MX5 Cup at Brands Hatch. Here we go. Join onto this. Right, so we're in the car and we're ready to go. Uh, it's worth noting this is the H pattern version of the MX5. It's not exactly the same as the iRacing MX5. Uh, that one's sequential and uh, also the iRacing one has the little race display. Uh, they still do race these MX5s. In fact, they race the older MX5s uh, with the H pattern in the UK as well. There's, diff there's loads of series that do MX5, but uh, H pattern, not exactly the same car, but still. I'm excited to uh, note the differences between the general feeling and handling overall after a month away. So let's get out of the pits here. Okay, got a minute left in uh, quali. <laughs> Perf that's all you need. Woo! <laughs> oh dear. Well, right away, guys. Right away, the force feedback in AC, absolutely mind-boggling. On an utterly different plane to iRacing, I can feel exactly where the tyres are at. And uh, the car feels super, super nice and stable, as you'd expect from this type of vehicle. Let's, let's get into things nice and easy, though. Let this guy go past. <laughs> it's, like, it's amazing, actually. You can feel exactly where the tyres are at. Oh, it's like the fidelity of the tyres and the force feedback in this. <laughs> Compared to eye racing, it's absurd. You can you can preemptively counter steer based off the grip that you can feel, and then it also it really feels like you're pushing the car into the corner, like you're leaning on the tyres as opposed to avoiding the tyres. I need to lean on the tyres a bit more. Start to find that balance point for the vehicle. So the. As I say, these are slightly different MX-5s in AC and iRacing, but uh, the iRacing one, you really have to sort of hold back. <laughs> hold back driving, that's how I describe iRacing. Whereas AC, it's push harder driving iRacing you have to drive it like it's a bobsled preemptively 
So immediately, the sensation from having played iRacing a lot to now playing this, the difference is, is that I am now massively, massively underdriving on the AC scheme of things. Because in iRacing, you can't overdrive at all. Well, if you do, you can, okay, you can overdrive in the context of iRacing. But in the grand context of simulators and pushing tires, iRacing absolutely punishes you for pushing onto the tires and then trying to balance it on the tires. Whereas if you drive like that in AC, you're just not getting anything out of the vehicle. Like you, you need to get up onto the tires to be getting the performance out of the vehicle, which is, to, to be honest, that's also my experience with any, with my very, very limited time in real cars. Hello! <laughs> you really have to be getting onto the tyres or like pushing a bit to actually get something out of the vehicle. You, you, you don't have to... You have to lean on the tyres as opposed to being scared of them. Uh, in fact, I, I I would say in reality probably um, the risk is accidentally overdriving needlessly, whereas you just... That's not... I don't think that's a very particular risk in iRacing. Right, here we go. Race starting, 17 litres. I'm not happy with my settings on my wheel, my force feedback or anything, but... We're just going in. We're just going straight in. Who cares? <laughs> I'm ready to race. Eight lap race. Let's see how this goes. First ever race in a month. Right, we're just going. Rev it up. This is going to be carnage for sure. Go. Now keep in mind that AC is also basically free. Like this experience here you can get for like five pounds oh there it is there they go <laughs> four down not too dissimilar to your average line rock star <laughs> surprisingly the car going setting up the uh, outside of druids whoa oh no we caught it we caught it okay so the uh, druids curb in there doing his in a bit and unfortunately I, I gave someone a slap so you do have to be much more careful in Assetto Corsa of the kerbs than I racing. Completely forgot about that. AC's kerb, kerbs are absolutely brutal. <laughs> the big, that's the biggest thing with AC that Kudos never really fixed. I think Shader Patch might have a, an update for that, but... There you go, AC2. Rank multiplayer and kerbing Kudos. Get on it. Here we go. Let's try and flow this through here a bit. Stay in fourth gear. So I'm barely look at the car behind catching up. Mostly due to me not leaning on the tyres at all. So in iRacing, what I'd be doing is I'd go into the corner, I'd hold, I'd <laughs> take the wide line, and then I'd just use the brake to sort of create the cause the car to then sort of auto rotate into the corner from the brake. Um and then I would go through that procedure until I did it in the way that was fastest. I, I wouldn't be like feeling it out, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'd be like, I'd be like, right, there's the brake point, X amount of brake input, that rotates the car this amount, that means the car's trajectory will be fine through the corner, and then I sort of, and then the car kind of train lines through the corner, and then there's a little bit of wheel wiggling to stop the car rotating, but. Uh, this, right now, the way I'm driving this, is I am feeling where the grip is and adjusting accordingly. Ow! <laughs> Attempted murder! <laughs> Apparently I need to learn how to gear shift. Got a red light glowing on the dash, I don't even know what that's for. Pro probably uh, idiot detected in car. So what, what's really nice actually is the on-power grip through the corner. These guys are going to... The um, the way the tyres and grip directly seems to correspond to like the throttle input. It really, you really get that really nice feeling of like a tyre... The actual sense of the tyre slip curve as you're putting pressure on the tyre, you can really feel where the tyre load is. It's really, really analogous to when you're driving in a real car and you feel that G-loading on your body, you can feel like the, where the tyres are at in their sort of available grip. It's, it's, a, it's a really sort of 
deep, dynamic depth of force is being applied to. And you can feel that through your force feedback wheel in, in AC, which is absolutely magical. It really captures that aspect of driving. It, it's just, you don't have that in iRacing at all. So in iRacing, I think the MX-5 doesn't have the worst force feedback out of the cars in iRacing. There's no feeling for braking in iRacing at all. Uh, you get the rear pop, you can feel the rear rotating a bit. That comes through. But in terms of where the amount of slip is on the, on the tyres and how much you can push the brake and how much you can then turn in the brake zone, you, you're be much better off using the tyre squeal sound in I, in I racing. Whereas in AC, I'm just using the force feedback for that, which is in, in reality, I would be using the G load on my body primarily. Um, so AC just feels so much more natural in that regard of you're driving from forces as opposed to preemptively learning stuff. <laughs> guy's, guy's doing a drift comp. It's all good. Oh, but it's, it's actually incredible. The because uh, this is an MX, this is a bloody MX5, guys. <laughs> it's not like a a crazy vehicle. Um, but yeah, what I mean, what you do get in in iRace's force feedback mid corner, there is like a range of force for sort of some degree of the mid corner, like some variation of if if you're sliding or not, if you're massively understeering, but. When that's happening in I race in mid corner, it's normally it's normally too late to then be adjusting it. Like this, that that catch there that I'm doing there, where I'm sort of choosing when to bring the car out of the slide, and to what extent, is so much tighter in AC. It, it, in I racing, that would be like a really drawn out slide that you can't bring the car out of. Um, in I racing, it'd be, it's like if you were driving on snow or something. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird because it's because weirdly this car ha feels like it has a lot less the initial grip before you start sliding is lower than generally my experience with the iRacing MX-5. So that the road it almost feels like the road is uh, or the car tires aren't up to full temp in terms of its base driving before you start sliding. It feels slidier. <laughs> If that makes it, it feels like the track's lower grip until you actually start sliding, and then as soon as you start sliding, AC feels like it has like four four times the grip that iRacing has because the grip the the the, 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 the grip's returning to the tyres really quickly when you slide. When you correct it, the grip is returning like like my experience of real tyres; they don't stay stuck over the limit, which I think encourages you then to actually push harder because you know that the grip's going to return and you're not just going to slide off the track like a like a bobsled. So right now, the experience I'm having is I feel like I'm massively, massively under the limit and I'm massively under driving this. Whereas if this was my first time in iRacing, I would be like, right, I'd, I'd probably have crashed actually <laughs> with the MX-5 already, especially with the catches we've had to do. Um... But I, I, you see, this is encouraging me to push. This is encouraging me to go faster and to uh, potentially kill myself, which I, which I think is really fun. <laughs> so if you've ever been in a real car, like even rental go-karts, my experience has always been that you feel like, oh, you could go faster. You need to, you could push harder. It, it eggs you on until the moment that you drive into something and break yourself. It lures you into a... <laughs> it, it makes you feel like you're superhuman and lures you into a, a sense of security rather than it feeling like, oh, I'm going to die any second. Uh, iRacing, ironically, is more like my experience of mountain biking, <laughs> where, where when I'm going down a hill on my mountain bike, I always feel like I'm going to die any second now. Oh, here we go. See, we went a little bit, a uh, little bit too uh, hot into that. I think didn't, didn't quite hook it up, and you could just see the front, the front's pushing, and I could feel that resistance in the force feedback. It's absolutely superb, like terrible lap time, but superb as a communication of what's going on. We're on lap five of eight here. The, the uh, other drivers in the server didn't seem to be too bad, actually. We've had a few, we had a few wrecks and some silliness, but. Done a lot of MX5 in iRacing, obviously top split, and uh, 
can assure you, <laughs> it's not the cleanest of racing. Actually, this is... Oh, he's just binned himself. Really fun trying to actually get this to the limit and then hold it at the limit. It's that balancing component. This this is what's completely missing from iRacing. iRacing is drive preemptively. Mem memorize the inputs so you can drive very effective preemptively, which is fantastic as a training tool, and that's a good start, but like you want to be doing that in any sim. You want to preemptively set the car up as best possible. Uh, that's, that's obviously a very good way to drive to go faster. So it's not universally a bad thing, but then it lacks this... Whoa! <laughs> it lacks this secondary component of actually being able to balance the car properly once you're at the limit. Not that you do just... You can catch slides, and I have to say this, because everyone always says that I'm saying the, the, the straw man what I'm saying. You can catch slides in iRacing, and you can counter steer to stop yourself from binning it, but you just don't have that range of range of control of the balance at the limit like you can't you can't really choose multiple crab walking angles mid corner depending on what you're doing on the accelerator brake and the wheel like nowhere near to the degree that you can in in, in this um anyone that doubts me about the sliding aspect of of ac go and watch that video where the guy who's never done real drifting goes in and just drifts like a pro immediately entirely from ac training it's like okay <laughs> That's a pretty good demonstration of how powerful, how well AC does sliding and tyre mechanics at the limit. Obviously, drifting's at the extreme, but what you'll find is driving in anything, ultimately you're going to be, you're going to have some degree of slip angle, and there's going to be some degree of balance in that. Even up to Formula One, that's that's part of the crux of uh, you know balancing at the limit. Uh, to me, it's the most fun part of driving. I'm always drifting, even when I'm racing. Maybe only to a few degrees, but we're always drifting. That's, you know, why do you think they put drifting in Mario Kart? It's fun. That's why drifting in everything. Round the outside we go. <laughs> so I'm like woefully slow in this, but this is so satisfying. Um, so satisfying from a sort of handling perspective. I will say, I, what I do like in iRacing, obviously the curbing, as I say, that initial grip, I do like the, um, the the nature of it in, in iRacing, the MX-5 and the cars in general feel as if they, they drive as if they have a looser rear diff, a more open rear diff. And in iRacing, you can roll the cars into the corner initially easier, so they're more responsive to that. And also, uh, the sort of dabbing of the brake to move the weight of the vehicle to then turn it in. Uh, it's much more sensitive in eye racing, so that again, that sort of preemptive poise and that preemptive setup in the corner, I think eye racing actually does better. The problem is, as soon as you get onto the actual tyres and into sort of slip that you're wanting to play with, that's where eye racing completely breaks down. So, you know, I, 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 eye racing is tyre model, I think. <laughs> but the, oh, the force feedback guys in this. I, I can tell that I'm the thing is, immediately, I can just see and feel exactly where I'm losing time as well. Largely because of the force feedback is describing that I could have gone faster, that's why that didn't hook up, I need to use more throttle, I should have done this. I can the game is telling me exactly what I need to be doing to go better, or, or where the room to go faster is. Whereas when I'm playing iRacing, even even in stuff where we've got so in the Formula Ford at Donington, we were like two tenths off the record, the world record pace, or three tenths, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think we were that far off it at all. I mean, we might have actually been on it. It's hard to say because in races, it's different to the uh, hot lap. But even when we're like very close, reasonably speaking, to the world record pace, other than like the general sort of trajectory through a corner, the like apexing and stuff, I wouldn't be able to tell you specifically Oh yeah, that's uh, at this point in time exactly. I could have applied this more throttle or less or whatever, ba based off the force feedback and stuff. Like you, you have to learn it by delta bar watching. <laughs> so it, it just makes it so much less direct and intuitive, not being able to feel exactly where you're gaining and losing the time. Now my entry into that is horrendous. It's quite interesting in different simulators that the approach like 
where you get on the throttle, uh, which part in the apex you're getting on the throttle, how much you load the car into the corner, how much you can sort of lean into the tyres, how much you throw the car in versus roll the car in. It's, it's interesting, the, the different sims, like... Um, so I always find with race room, for example, it's it's much better to lean on the front tyres going to a corner, almost going into an understeer, and then allowing the sim's grip to rebite in. And then that will put you very close to like the maximal speed through a corner. Whereas you don't, if you do that in AC, you'll just understeer. Do it in iRacing, uh, again, you'll just sort of understeer. But there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, this is just such a... I mean, it doesn't have the online ranking and we don't have voice chat. And our voice chat is like the best thing in a, in a game. <laughs> Fact. Um, but... But... Um, the, the actual driving experience in AC is like it's like 10 years... It's like 40 years ahead of iRacer. It's like iRacing is like a game from the 90s in, in handling a feel, dynamics, depth to force feedback, balance at the limit. iRacing is like some like weird arcade game f from years ago. Whereas th this, is, it, this is like driving a real car in approach. I'm not, I'm not saying the grip levels are spot on. I know they, uh, the curbing and how slippery they are. There's loads of weird shit in iRacing in, in, in AC. There's loads of weird shit. Same with every sim. But the actual approach... To driving in this is like real cars like the approach is is really good <laughs> absolutely amazing I, I just unbelievable how good ac is um again to be fair to i racing that toyota gr86 car is much closer to the ha to this sort of handling and you can push it i think it's because the traction control on the toyota gr86 stops the tires going over the limit and getting stuck in the superheated tire slidey issue that i think most cars have uh, in i racing to some some degree or other um but oh man guys <laughs> well that's it that's it that is it that is our first drive uh, in a sim after having played i racing for a month um i am terrible like it's quite interesting actually how much you have to adapt to go from sim to sim when you move from one sim to another sim how slow you are <laughs> where you have to like throw away brain neurons have to be deleted every time you go into a different sim and your brain's like oh god <laughs> Uh, so I, I could see from my driving there that it was a lot to improve just to go a bit faster. But, ah, uh, oh, amazing, guys. Assetto Corsa, great. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you've got loads of sims there. As I say, the voice chat, the online racing, you know, the sort of rank rating system, the despair, the misery. iRacing is great for that. I, I will still play iRacing. I, I've had a lot of enjoyment from it, just even after a month of absolute brain damage. I have really enjoyed lots of aspects of iRacing. Uh, but for but for the raw handling and driving experience, oh my god, how good is AC? Uh, well, anyway, well that's that's this video, guys. Let me know in the comments section your well-rounded, uh, critical, and completely non-fanboy comments. But if you did enjoy this video, click the like button, click subscribe. That's the new button I've implemented. It's the dyslexic only subscribe button. The subscribe button. Um, yes, do all that stuff. Thanks for watching. Happy tea drinking. Take care and goodbye.